everybody. Welcome to Meow Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore, and this show is presented each and every Wednesday by the Cat Fanciers Association. Joining me at the helm are my co-pilots, start with Kathy Black, an all-breed judge for the CFA, and Teresa Kiger, an all-breed judge for CFA and editor of Cat Talk. Somewhere, if I bribe them, here come my furry co-host. We have Rusty, the performer, and pet safety cat, Casey. And a little drum roll, because this is pretty big deal, guys. Our special guest today has the world's strongest typing fingers in the world of pet writers. She also should be on Broadway, because she has an amazing musical background and even did a broad, uh, not a Broadway, soon, I'm optimistic but a musical called Strays. And she's a major cat advocate since she was in diapers. And I'm talking about the one and only Amy Sojai. Please so, let's uh, not talk about diapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in the other end of life. Okay, yeah, other end. okay. <laughs> so as you guys know, here's how we're gonna tee it up. We're gonna have a little fun, uh, make you laugh a bit, hopefully. Um, we're gonna announce who won prizes from last week's show. And then we're going to get right into talking with Amy. The breed we're going to profile today is the Siamese. And that's going to be presented by Kathy Black. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, CCW, the Cat Companions World, which is great to do. We might even talk about the recent CFA Top Cat Virtual Competition that yours truly was a virgin judge for. And we had Kathy Black be uh, a judge for a couple of categories, right? I did all the uh, the confirmation, the kitten yeah. championship, championship, a health pet. Well, they just trusted me with Christmas is for the cats. <laughs> 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 so I didn't have to worry about any of that. And our, our special salute to cats, the kitty cocktail, is um, actually being called the ginger cat margarita in honor of all of us that have those orange and red tabbies that just make our lives anything but boring. And next week, our guest is going to be one of the very top, talented, professional cat sitters who's also working on training more people uh, on cats. And I'm laughing because Mr. Rusty likes to uh, get into things we while I'm talking. Out. So he has the scoop <laughs> on that. He's trying to find the treats, but I have them. So let's get started. We're in the holiday season. And if you ask any good card carrying cat, you know, what, what are your favorite songs? Um, which ones are they rusty for you? He goes, I don't want Silent Night, kind of boring. Deck the halls, I'd rather wreck the halls, right? So in a survey from Chewy.com, Here's what cats say are their favorite songs. Number one, what's new, pussycat? That's my Tom Jones. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Second, cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Who sings that? Yeah. Um, Karachi. Kim Croce. Uh, yep. Kim Croce. And, oh. and cats show great range in their musical genre. Meow, 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 meow. Cat scratch fever. <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Who did that? Do you guys know? Uh, Isn't that Ted Nugent? Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yes. Okay. I never did it on my glockenspiel, but trust me, <laughs> that's that's what it is. And my personal favorite, even though I love my baby dogs and my dogs, who let the dogs out? Who, 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 please let the dogs out? Who, who, who? All right. So that's it for my musical talents. What do you guys think? America's Got Talent on the way. Speed dial, maybe. Oh, yeah. All right. The second uh, thing I want to do is talk with uh, <laughs> Kathy. Um, Kathy, let's talk about um, the Top Cat International competition. It was all virtual. Uh, we do want to get a shout out, get the, the, um, the, the person in charge. Her name again is? Lorna, Lorna Don Fremont. Yes, she has been, and Desiree Bobby, both from CFA. So tell us. Um, we had over a thousand entries, right? Yeah. Was, and that's yeah. pretty big deal. So tell us a little bit about our, when are all the results going to be um, revealed? I know it was presented by a number of sponsors led by 
Pet King Brand Zymox. Thank you guys. But tell us about uh, the competition because we're not letting COVID stop us. We're not pushing footing around. We're going to still have cat shows and cat competitions. It was, it was different, of course, than judging cats in person. But there were some beautiful examples. In fact, some of the uh, Siamese pictures I have later on, I stole from the cats that were entered in the show. Um, oh, wow. So there was, I had over 80, I think over 87 or 88 entries in almost every category, and I could only pick my top 15. So wow. I completed all my finals, but I think that they're, they're allowing some of the judges, or all of us judges, a little more time. I don't think they're all have to be done until Saturday or Sunday, which means that you still have time to go out to the website and vote. Sure, and please, please share it. that website, would you? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. No, it's CFA dot. <laughs> it's the VCA. It's the CFA VCA dot. Oh, here, I got it right here. Dot org slash top cat challenge. So let All me right. my screen real fast. And um, and it is. And I think um, we're going to have. Uh, is Teresa? Are you plugging that in? I sure am. All right. Thanks, Teresa. V, v, like Victor, vcc.cfa.org slash top cat 2020. And here's where you can go to the gallery and you can end up voting for your favorite cats. And there's already some finals that have been posted. So these are all the different finals that have been posted so far. So be sure and check those out and see if your cat's a winner. And here's all the different categories down the left hand side. So everyone, please go vote. Vote for your favorite. It is vcc.cfa.org slash topcat2020. All right. I'm just destroying my, my screen right now, so don't worry. Don't look away. Don't, don't look at the person behind. <laughs> no, I think I was sharing my screen, huh? We're having a, a screen failure of malfunction again. Oh, no, I'm not having a malfunction. Rusty came in like a bulldozer and just knocked everything around. So that's what I'm, all right, I'm back. I'm back. All right. Um, we do have some winners from last week's um, contest. Let's start first. The trivia question, and now you can try to answer this. I'm going to try Amy and see how she is. Last week's question was, um, let's see, where is it? Okay. I am learning Spanish via Duolingo. And as I told everybody, I still sound Italian. It's terrible. <laughs> well, but we wanted to know what is the pr proper name for cat in Italian? Gato. You know? Gato. Yep. And it's different in Spanish, which is gato. The only gato. difference is gato in Italian has two T's and gato in Spanish has one T. So the winner of that, uh, there's two winners. We were giving away a couple of um, Doc and Phoebe uh, pet uh, hunting uh, uh, toys created by our guest last week, the remarkable Dr. Liz Bales. So um, take it away, Kathy, what'd you get? Yes, they were Alicia Heyer and Chelsea Turner. And I've already gotten in contact with both these ladies and they've responded and their gift is on the way. So awesome, awesome. And, Chelsea. and the third prize we gave away was during my talk with Dr. Liz Bales, we were given away one of her other prizes, which was a, it was forever the fun. The puzzle. Yeah, it was a treat puzzle. It's really cool. And the question was, what was the name of her cat during the show that kept photo bombing? And the name was Bean. Bean. <laughs> which I don't want to get near Bean if Bean has gas. But, um, but Bean was a cutie pie. And so do you know, did somebody get that one? Yes, Elizabeth okay. Darbro. Elizabeth Darbro. So she got, she got the puzzle feeder and congratulations to her and her cat. All right. And thank you again, Dr. Liz Bales. So now we're going to work your noodle this week. And we're going to give away... This beautiful, not mine, but you're going to get a brand new one, desk <laughs> topper. So you got those cats bugging you and stepping on your keyboard and what you doing, mom? 
Paul. So this is by Perniture. It's a great store out of St. Paul, Minnesota. They're going to give you one of these. And, and my cat, Casey's long-legged and a big, tall dude. I laugh. He somehow circles, 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 and fits inside. I don't know how they do this. But it's a really cool thing. Cats dig it. We also want to give a shout out to Mary Tan of Whisker Media. She's the one who introduced us to Perniture. So thank you all. So here comes, don't answer this question, Amy, out loud. Use your poker face. Here comes <laughs> oh. the question because we won't reveal the answer until later. We know this late, great, grumpy cat, right? Uh, he was one of the first Instagram stars and social media darlings. He did pass away um, last year, um, but... Here comes the question. And in his real life, on his veterinary records, his name was Tardar Sauce. Did you guys know that? Tardar Sauce? Yeah. Sauce, like tartar sauce, but with a, t a D. Yep. And the way he, he kind of looked like that, because he had uh, dwarfism, and he, I think, either had an under or overbite. That's what gave him that look. And apparently it was a really nice cat. He, he just looked grumpy. Um, so the question for you guys to win this desk topper is, what is the name of the town in which the late great grumpy cat lived? Was it A, Abilene, Texas? B, Cleveland, Ohio? C, Morristown, Arizona? Or D, Paducah, Kentucky? No clue. Any, no clue. Don't, 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 don't. So I'll repeat them again. What was the city or town that the late great Grumpy Cat lived? Abilene, Texas? Cleveland, Ohio? Morristown, Arizona? Or Paducah, Kentucky? Wherever it was, I'm sure he lived in a very nice house because she made a lot of money. Yes, she did. <laughs> so that's our trivia question for today. Now it's my honor uh, to welcome onto our show a longtime friend of mine and a longtime friend to all fine felines. Um, she has quite, she's done quite a lot. And just to touch the highlights, she is one of the co-founders of Cat Writers Association, which has been around for over 25 years. And she also has written... 35 plus books. Let me see your let me see your typing fingers. Come on. Bring them up, Amy. Bring them up. Okay, man. Okay, Don't wrestle her, them. man. Don't wrestle her. Um, <laughs> she has done both fiction and nonfiction. I'm a nonfiction gal. This one amazes me. And the other thing I want to share with you is that she also has got a really a real talent in music and composing. I think that's what your degree was, wasn't it? And yeah, yep. Yeah, it was a music communication double major. So basically it was theater. Okay. I, I didn't want to go to class. I just wanted to, you know. <laughs> and she lives in the, the, the in the cool town called Sherman, Texas, which is about 45 minutes uh, north of where I live here in Dallas. It's between Kathy's home in, in Duncanville, Oklahoma, and my home in Dallas. So yeah. we're going to have somebody visit us when COVID's over, right, Kathy? Yeah. All right, there you go. Um, but she's here today. We're going to cover a lot of things, and she's going to give away um, autographed copies of two of her latest books. Can you show the book? It's called Cat Life. Say the whole, what's the subtitle? Cat Life. It is celebrating the history, culture, and love of the cat, and it's, it's the first full-color picture book that I have done. It's a, it's a coffee table book, and it's got Lots and lots of breeds too. So oh, I see Phoebe's of, picture there. <laughs> yeah, it's got it's got all kinds of fun stuff in it. And I had a ball. Look, yeah. How many pages so, is that, um, Amy? It this is the hardcover, and it is. Let's see. With the index, it's about 135 pages. Wow. Uh, and for wow. the dog people, there's there's a dog one also. This one won a Certificate of Excellence Award from the Cat Writers Association. And um, the dog one is, has been nominated. So pause we'll, cross, pause cross. Pause, yes, pause cross. For the Dog Writers Association of America, DWA. Right, an equal opportunity, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, before we get going, uh, 
pets have always had an important role, place in your heart, in your life. Who's your current uh, pet troop you got with you oh. now? Oh, let's see if I can get them up here. I've got Bravo Dog with me. Bravo, where'd you go? He's sleeping. Uh, <laughs> let's let sleep me, no, let, me get, let me get Karma, though. Karma, come, okay. come here, sweetie. That's what I always say when my dog is sleeping. Don't nope, wake her up. I was oh. sleeping. This is my karma cat. Oh. Now, karma is one smart cat. Tell us a story. It was a really bad stormy night. Sounds like an intro to any great novel. <laughs> Tell us how you got to be with karma. Okay. It was, it was about, um, about six and a half years ago. It was on a, a January 30th. Here in North Texas, we don't get snow very often. We get ice storms. Oh. And they were forecasting an ice storm to come in. And Karma showed up on the back patio. Well, as a kitten, he was about eight or nine months old, according to the veterinarian later. And he was just digging on the patio glass doors, trying to get into the house. And I at didn't... the time, you had uh, magic, right? Yes, a big German I didn't... Shepherd. I didn't see him, but my black German, German shepherd um, magic saw him, alerted me, barked. And of course, poor karma took off. And uh, well, at first he didn't, though. He he was still digging. He apparently had met dogs before because he still wanted to come into the house. Wow. So I went out after him. I'm thinking, you know, this is a young cat. It's going to have an ice storm out here. He had a collar on. Had oh. a little blue collar on that matched his blue eyes. Yes, and I want his eyes. His eyes are beautiful. His <laughs> eyes are beautiful. And uh, so I called to him. He didn't come. And so I started meowing to him. And I went out after him and meowed. And he came to me, came wow. up. And, um, you know, so he's, he's, he was like um, the kitty that uh, my magical dog always wanted. Because <laughs> we, talked, we talked earlier about my Saren kitty, who was my Siamese wannabe, who... You know, she wanted to be an only cat. She didn't, she tolerated him. She didn't care much. She was kind of like the Greta Garbo of time, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm beautiful. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> Karma loved magic and magic loved him. He finally had a cat that would let him sniff butt. And was, they had a wonderful time together. And, and then, um, of course, when, when magic died, we all mourned him and karma as much as the rest of us. And uh, he slept with magic's collar for, for about a week and a half after he passed. Wow. Which proves that yeah. all sentient beings have feelings and friends, right, right. Casey? Right, and it, right. It seems like the stray cat will pick a family and say, I am yours. And so let me in because I'm here now. Absolutely. And that's evidently what Karma did. Karma said, you're now my mama, so let me in. So what's Karma's personality like, Amy? Uh, Karma is very laid back. Um, Saren wouldn't let us pet him or pick him up, uh, her pick, pick her up very much. He likes to lap set. You can, you can see I can pick him up and do almost anything with him. Come here, Bravo. Um, we got our, our most recent dog, Bravo, as much for Karma as for us because he was missing his dog friend. Come here, bud. Can you see me? Can you come up? Let me see if I can get a... Okay. Hi, Bravo. Hi, Bravo. sweetie. And, and I know I don't want to get into a lot of it, but Bravo is a cancer survivor, right? Yes. You can see there he's missing. He's a tripod. He's got... He's uh, missing his right front leg, but he's doing great. He was uh, diagnosed with um, osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer earlier this year and went through chemo and is so far he is doing fantastic so he's a cancer survivor and we're a happy yay! pet family yay that's incredible all right well we're wishing good energy and good everything for you guys so let's get into it you like to write about cats but you're a journalist so what i love about you is that you do a lot of research yeah. And uh, can you talk a little bit about a couple of the books? I've got some of the titles in front of me. Um, the show would be over if I finished every title that you have. But she's got big books and little books, guys. We got Cat Facts, The Complete Cat Care. Yeah, here's um, the big Aging. Yeah, show that one. Yeah, yeah that one uh, probably burned a few brain cells. Uh, right? Yeah, this this one, um, I, I tell, this is um, uh, 545 pages. 
Long. Oh my gosh. And, and we're showing um, on the screen right now just a few of your books. And, yeah, and uh, uh, I mean, again, it's illustrated, but, and it's an A to Z encyclopedia. So it's basically, I tell people that's that this book took 20 years to write because it's all the accumulation over the years. So you start with abscess and you go clear through to zoonosis. So it's a little short chapters um, yeah. that are, you know, I updated along the way. And now, you know, with new things that are coming out all the time, uh, because I self-published these, I can update them as I go. So if there's a great breakthrough on, for instance, on FIP, then mm -hmm. I can come in and update that right away. Whereas with New York publishing houses, I have some books that have been out for years, very successful. They won't let me update them. And there's so much new stuff out there. Yeah, so I, I hear you. So for, it's, for all of you that are thinking about being writing a book, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, whether it's published by you or by a publishing house. Is there any like three thou shalts always do that you can share? Um, trust yourself, you know best. Okay. Um, write what you love. You know, a lot of people say, write what you know. I say, write what you love because that's gonna sustain you through over those kind of dry periods of time. Um, so I have so, to do a Katie cocktail book. Yes. With yes, Teresa Kiger. Yes. <laughs> I think, yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the fiction book that I wrote, the first one um, that I wrote, it was the book I had always wanted to read and it wasn't out there. Oh. So I wrote the book I wanted to read. What was that one called? Uh, that first one was Lost and Found. There are five books in the series now. And I wrote it because I wanted an, uh, a dog viewpoint character. And I'd always been told, no, that's kids books. You know, New York wouldn't touch it. The agents wouldn't touch it. Well, you know, my readers love it. And it was going to be a standalone. Now I have five books and more coming along. You've got a book coming out, just came out, you were saying, that has a feline yeah. lead, right? Well, I have to, I have to do that. This, that's, um, the fifth one is uh, Hit and Run. Okay. And there is a Maine Coon cat that uh, lives with the main character who is a dog trainer. Well, she's an animal trainer, so she, she does both. But I thought, you know, we've, we've had the, the dog, which is uh, based on magic. He's a German Shepherd um, service dog. Okay. And uh, he has his own viewpoint chapters. And I thought, well, it's time for the cat to do that too. Oh. And so in Hit and Run, Macy the Maine Coon actually <laughs> helps uh, track down another missing cat because oh. we know that we there are uh, cats that are now doing that and their sense of smell is just as accurate as dogs. Yeah, and we had the we had uh, uh, Kimberly cat Freeman on and her yes. uh, cat uh, was on who is a she's a cat detective. So yeah. with Macy the Maine Coon, because my co-pilots know Maine Coons because they are all breed judges. You did your homework, didn't you? I did, I did actually, and that's, uh, I call these thrillers with bite because they all have some, they're thrillers, but they also have um, pet centric plots or things that go into them. So for instance, in the second installment after Lost and Found, there was um, um, Hide and Seek and Macy goes missing, is, is oh. low. And come to find out Macy has hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy, so, I that's a very, that's a breed, right, Kathy? That's more predisposed to that, right? Well, not necessarily more predisposed, but it can be in some bloodlines and the reputable breeders will have the cats checked. Exactly, exactly. And so I was able to put that into the storyline and explain that. And in the back of each of these books, I have uh, a fact or fiction section. So I was able to give a shout out to Win Feline Foundation and talk about uh, HCM and all of these different kinds of things. So and briefly tell people the three people that don't know because the recent Top Cat show benefited Win Foundation. Can you just tell us uh, in a sentence or two what the heck that is? For Kathy or me? You. Oh, me. Well, Women Feline Foundation is basically, they're awesome. It is, <laughs> it's, um, it's a foundation that funds um, feline health studies so that we, we can better diagnose, treat, and ultimately prevent some of the health problems that uh, some of our cats have. So it's, it's 
I, I love it's them. Been, it's been very closely tied to CFA since its beginning. Yes, uh, that's good. It's branched off on its own now, but yeah, they, they give hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants every year to people that are doing research. And it is an amazing organization. And we have a lot of our clubs that donate to it and our breeders will donate to it uh, because we know they're out there fighting for us to help us solve right. some of the issues that we do have in our in our general cat population as well as our pedigree breed. Exactly, well, well and that's, the point, you know, that's the, the point with uh, you know the hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. I chose a Maine Coon because there had been issues in certain bloodlines in the past, but it affects, you know, Karma Cat. It could affect any kitty along the way. Cat tail just went past your. Um, yeah, that's Casey. Okay. He wanted to. He had to do his dramatic mo ah, moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and trust me, it's a war zone in here. Please. Ah. <laughs> when you have two ginger cats, it's a war zone. It, you well, just see, I have, a, you just smile. I have a third. <laughs> I have a puppy, um, shadow puppy. It's oh. downstairs. Um, he showed, he's, he's my, um, he's my pandemic pup that oh. showed up the weekend that uh, Bravo had been diagnosed with cancer. And Isn't we that fate? Pardon me? Isn't that fate? It's, I think, I think it was because we needed, we needed to pick me up, but for sure Bravo did. And I think it helped his rehab and they are so, so tight. Isn't I that mean, sweet? Yeah. It's, it's like Mutton Jeff. I mean, he looks like a, <laughs> It's so funny because he doesn't have to duck to go underneath Bravo, and he goes and he goes underneath and sits where that. So, how much does Bravo weigh, and how much does Shadow weigh? Um, well, Bravo before his surgery was 122 pounds. He's now mm -hmm. right at 100 pounds. Okay. Um, uh, Shadow is right about 18 pounds. Okay, that's the <laughs> difference. <laughs> Just a little bit of yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to so, folks. Amy Sojai is our guest, and her website you got to go to. It's you want to give it to him? Sure. It's just my name, shajai.com. And that's S-H-O. Well, you can see my name right there. S-H-O-J-A-I.com. Or, and you can get to my blog from there too. And that's amyshajai.com. And I want you guys, because we're all nosy, I want you guys to look at her background. This wall is full of awards. And I, I bet oh. there's even some more somewhere else. But uh, she has been one of the most uh, winning writers in cat and dog competitions and other like uh and the oklahoma what's the uh, oklahoma, oh, oklahoma writers federation yeah yeah so she takes up a lot of wall space with her hardware <laughs> but it's really well done but she has to dust a lot you know I so do. there's a downside to that one thing i want to get into this is really unique is you talked about being a double major was it at indiana state no, this was a small um, liberal oh, arts college. Wait, Butler? No. Goshen, Goshen College. Goshen. All right. We're both Hoosiers, corn-fed yeah, born yeah. Hoosiers, Amy and I. I'm from the city of Crown Point near Chicago where we had the escape-proof jail. So John <laughs> Dillinger took a bar of soap with shoe polish, carved it into the shape of the gun, and fooled Sheriff Holly. What's Goshen known for? Uh, they were one of the top nursing schools. It's also, it's a Mennonite school also. So it's, okay. it's you are not allowed to dance on campus. Got a foot loose. Unless, foot loose. <laughs> unless it's part of your heritage. Now they, may, they may have changed things since I was there, but um, we had we had our creative foot movement event that, that got some people. Just, what was that called? Foot tapping? Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know. Wow. Well, the reason I'm teeing you up for this is, hey, guys, she helped write a musical. It's called Strays. And give us a quick little background on that. And then I want you to just do a little like 30 seconds, if you don't mind, uh, of, uh, something okay. from one of the songs. Okay. Hey, this is me, how we are. Well, that's true. That's true. Well, Strays, Strays came out of this. Uh, my um, co-writer, uh, Frank Steele, is a huge, huge pet lover also. And we had been, um, this was actually our second musical we had written. And I wanted to do something with um, cats and dogs as characters, but no special makeup, no special costumes. Yeah. The actors well, we know what happened to the remake of Cats with... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so it had to be, it ha you had to be a good enough performer to know that Arden, you're a Chihuahua, and Kathy, you're a Persian cat. So you had to be able to do all of that. Exactly. <laughs> So um, it and basically the premise is it's a it's um 
uh, vignettes. So it's a whole group of different scenes that with an overarching theme, all of these pets have lost their home for one reason or another, and they're looking to be adopted. And okay. of course, it's a happy ending at the end, but things from, um, you know, the pariah cat that nobody wants to adopt to um, the dog that got kicked out of the house to, the, um, you know, the, the kitten and the puppy that are clueless that don't know what's really going on. Um, the dog the that got kicked my out life. the litter box grazing, you know, all of these different <laughs> things. So... Um, so the, the, lead, the lead song is called? Uh, the title song is Strays, and I'll, I'll see if I can do a little bit of that. All here. right, everybody, take a listen. Amy Sojai <laughs> with The Strays, the musical. Okay. I'm just a stray, running on my own, looking for a way home, a place to stay. On my way, bugging games on loan, booking it alone, for one more day. Why can't you see, won't you look at me, freedom's not for free. Anything I'll do, all I can give, I'll live the way you live, anything forgive, share my life with you. Never had a home, no one to love, I'm on a search for an opening door, can't wait to see what's meant to be, what do you say, maybe today. Wow. Excellent. Applause and applause. Wait a minute, Casey, what do you think? I wore my, my bow tie because I heard there was a, like almost an opera singer coming. And then, wait a minute, it's my friend Amy. We go way back. I'm telling you, you have a beautiful voice. I'm an alto. There's no way I could hit any of those notes. Well, you know, as, as the older I got, I was a first soprano. I was almost color trout. Uh, uh, color a trot. I can't even say it. I've had too much wine. Uh, <laughs> the but, truth comes out. <laughs> uh, no, I've, my voice has gotten lower and lower. And one of the most recent uh, shows that I did, I do community theater sometimes just, just for fun. Um, I got to play um, the, the squid and Little Mermaid, uh, yeah. the um, uh, Ursula. And my hair was purple and purple face and everything. And that's that's usually sung by a man. It's a low, low thing. <laughs> so I can sing, you know, I've, the older I get, the more range I have. Whereas when I was young, I wanted to do it and I couldn't. So, so are we going to now say, Amy's okay. got bass. Amy's got <laughs> bass. Amy's got bass. Well, that's good. Now, are you guys following all this? This is one individual who writes fiction, nonfiction, Help create the Cat Writers Association, has written musicals, goes in community theater, and she's always there to help people out. So right, tell us about the right stuff. <laughs> and right tell us how you spell it because you'll make an English teacher cringe. Well, hey, listen, I'm a writer. I get to make words up, and I do. Um, I'm just full of writericity. And <laughs> um, so right stuff is S-C-H-T-U-F-F. And if you go to amyshajai.com, one, one of the little pages there, uh, you can click on the Right Stuff uh, page. And I have a series of webinars on um, writing and publishing. And uh, from, uh, you know, Writer's Block, the, the one I think on Writer's Block is free. So you can, you can watch that. There's also one called Writing Like Cats and Dogs, How to Put Pets in Your Fiction. Those That's two are really free. good. I like Those that. Those two are free. And then there's a bunch of others um, doing audio books, how to do a Kindle, how to uh, put pictures in your books, um, color pages, all of those different things. So those are available for anybody that's interested. Well, you have learned how to do audio books, how mm -hmm. to do Kindle. It was kind of trial by fire, but you know, you, yeah. you're what I like about you, many things, is I'm bribing my cats right now, is that 
you aren't satisfied with just okay i've wrote i've written a book i'm done so well, what's in you that keeps driving you to keep expanding your knowledge and then sharing your knowledge i love that about you well part you know part of it is uh self-defense uh i don't know if you know, <laughs> you know i i quit writing for a while it was a little over a year um my agent couldn't couldn't sell anything um publishing has, had changed I had been uh, very successful as a nonfiction writer. And then suddenly my agent couldn't sell anything. And what happened was the internet. Um, I've heard of that. Right. Yeah, I've yeah. invented it, right? Well, the thing, <laughs> the thing is, uh, if you can go on Dr. Google and ask questions, who needs a book? And the publishers didn't want to you know, publish my books anymore. And so I quit and I oh. got a job teaching high school choir. And I was there. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was there for a little, little over a semester um, and learned really, really quickly that I absolutely love teaching and it's not what I was meant to do. Um, <laughs> and so I, well, that's a good I, gave, self I gave my notice. I still love, I still love teaching the kids and everything, but having to teach to the test and you know, jump all through the hoops and everything. And God bless teachers these days with a pen. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, my friend, teachers are just you know, say a prayer for them. They are going through all like the rest of us are. But um, within two weeks of uh, leaving teaching, I had uh, another book contract. Somebody had contacted me. It was a work for hire, but it got things going back. And, and explain that's about the time work. that self-publishing started too. Yeah. And so my mm -hmm. agent had the foresight to, whenever the books went out of print, she got my rights back. So I had all this material Good. And now I can update it myself and get it out there. And you ask, you know, why, why print books, why ebooks, why audio books, why uh, plays? Each each one has a different audience. Good That's point. another way. The strays play. They're people that would never ever buy my book or read a book, but came to the play and they learned why cats need their litter box cleaned every day they Good. learn why cats scratch and it's normal there's one of the, my favorite songs in the show is called it's normal and it's all the different things that pets lost their homes over and then the chorus is but it's normal oh, yeah, i like cool. that that's fantastic so yeah. what do you think of her kathy aren't you glad we got her on i am i think she's very entertaining and very talented <laughs> She's very talented and she's committed to helping cats and dogs and writers. So uh, Cat Writers Association, you were one of the co-founders and uh, the dues are still very inexpensive, guys. And it's getting a revival, I, I sense. And w we've had to go through different growth spurts, but I've been a member since 1999. Yep. Yeah, we founded it. There were four of us. Michael Brim, who at the time was the PR uh, specialist for um, CFA, right. and uh, he great was man working. He was. Yeah, and he was working with Cats Magazine. This was in the day when we had actual print cat magazines. Mm -hmm. uh, Suzanne Stowe, who is still around, and she was circulation director of Cat Fancy Magazine. Oh, okay. And Debbie Phillips Donaldson, who was the then editor of Cat Fancy Magazine um, and uh, myself. So there were the four of us and I said, you know, I will do anything except treasurer. <laughs> and, and Don't you know, show so me the money. <laughs> it was like, so, you know, by default, I was, I was the president and I was the president for the first nine years. And um, then my husband said, we can get a life and I retired <laughs> and um, came back and did president again another time and been there kind of off and on helping as I can. But yeah, there's a really, really energetic new new team that has some really great ideas. We had a wonderful um, president and team that got us through all of this this past year. And so I'm I'm excited to see what the what the future holds. Well Deb Barnes was the pa immediate past president. Wonderful. And now, and we've had the current president on Meowy Hour, and that, of course, is Paula Gregg. Yes. So we're, we're getting everybody out there. But you've always been the mainstay, and a salute to the late, great Michael Brim. There is a special award given every year at the Cat Writers uh, Association, and it's the Michael Brim Distinguished Service Award. Mm -hmm. I was had the honor two or three years ago to win that, to be named that. 
I was so honored that I had the opportunity to get to know Michael. Um, so you know what, guys? Legacies live on because people like Michael Brim. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, and legacies, we're not, we're not killing you off. I know you write fiction and nonfiction, Amy. We're not killing you off, but your legacy is going to long outlast you. And uh, is well, there- I hope so. Yeah. And see, that's, that's the other part of it. You know, I, I don't, all my kids have, I used to say four legs and fur. Now I say at least three legs and fur. Um, so I don't have human children. So this, this is what I leave behind. And, and hopefully it will continue to educate and entertain and uplift people that love our companion animals. And, um, you know, my, my whole career, I, I was very fortunate to know why, why I was put on this earth. And it was to, in, to empower other people to help the pets that they love. That's, that's all I can do. You know what? That's a pretty good life, well lived. Mm -hmm. If you can help people through pets, and pets really do help us. I mean, I get reminded every day how to be a better human, thanks to my furry Brady That's Bunch. Um, what's something that Bravo and what's something Karma Cat has taught you personally, Amy? Oh, gosh. Um, karma that uh, live in the moment, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, take a nap when you can, follow the sun puddles. Um, <laughs> these, are, these are things to live by. Treats matter. Um, and bravo, <laughs> after, after going through this cancer stuff, it's like, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to put, put it into words, but, but bravo has taught us um, that you do, you do live in the moment. And he, he has never for one moment stopped believing he could do anything he ever could do. Nothing has stopped him. Wow. You're making me cry. You always make me cry. <laughs> I am, I am too. I do that. You know, even when I was singing the song, I was, I practiced earlier so I wouldn't cry because <laughs> the lyrics really do make me cry. And you guys, you get on the alley hour and, and the host will put you to tears. Come on. That's just what I do. <laughs> when Frank and I wrote uh, Strays, we, we wrote it at a, at a coffee shop here in town. And we would sit there, right? And I'd say, okay, um, you know, I'd, I'd write the verse, he'd write the lyric, and then we'd put them together. And we'd sit there and then we'd read it back to each other. And we'd both be just sobbing in tears. And it was, you know, we finally had to write some of the funny, fun ones. Um, you know, like there's, um, there's Calypso, there's a Calypso song in there about oh. a, a dog that's feeling, um, you know, he's gotten to a certain age and now he's feeling all of these urges. He's got to go find the girl dogs, you know. <laughs> so, so there's some funny stuff in there too. But I find that when I write the fiction too, if I can make myself cry, I know that I'm going to touch the readers too. And if that's, it, right. that's what I said earlier. Um, write what you love, write what makes you passionate, what makes your heart pump faster what makes you laugh out loud or it brings tears and you know you're going to reach your audience and our well pets, stated our pets do that to us they make us laugh they make us cry they touch our hearts yeah. you know, that's true that's and true. it's great i mean writing about writing about my pets it's just kind of you channel your your inner love there and mm -hmm. um it's it's they they really are my furry inspiration and that's um that's my publishing company is furry muse publications so Hey guys, we got a trivia question from our interview with Amy Sojai and uh -oh. Kate and um, whoops, hang on. <laughs> he stepped on the keyboard. <laughs> this is funny, this is funny, this is funny. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Uh, Rusty, what's the question we should ask? Okay, don't answer this, Amy, but the winner of this trivia question, there's two copies, so two people can win. Show us again the book, uh, Cat Life. I feel like Vanna White. I yeah, know. there you go. But I love the main coon on the cover. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Look at the back. Oh, look at uh, Kathy. Look at the back. Hey, yeah. Yeah, baby. I think it's the same. It's the same cat. Oh wow! So here comes the question. I'm kind of keeping it easy, but you guys, she said the name a couple of times. In her latest fiction book called Hit and Run, there is a main coon who is uh, starring in it. And what is the name of the main coon? And uh, don't worry about I spelling. Know, 
I know. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, so that is going to be two copies. Two copies. Yeah, we're gonna and Amy's yes. gonna autograph them to you all. Mm -hmm. And so when you send in your thing right now, or please, guys, you know the drill. This show, even though it's live, we're posting it on our Facebook, my Arden Moore Facebook the CFA, and then later on, uh, Kathy Black always posts our shows on YouTube. Just do Meowie Hour YouTube. It's real easy. You'll see all the shows. You still have a couple of days to still try to win. So tell your friends who may have to have an appointment with the dentist tonight. I don't know why, because they're <laughs> usually the appointments are at 2.30. <laughs> um, but if they're, if they're not able to meet the show live, we get a lot of people coming to see the show after so you still have a shot that's what i'm trying to say right kathy yes and those that are typing their answers on the zoom meeting i have a very difficult time reaching you from the zoom meeting if i don't know who you are so please type your answer on the cfa live broadcast you can always bring it up later on the cfa facebook page and type yeah. your answer in there because then i can send you a message through messenger Okay, so the, there's two books up for grabs. For, uh, uh, it's called Cat's Life, and it's by our special guest, Amy Sojai. What's the name of the main coon that stars in her latest fiction book called Hit and Run? I Good. think you got it. All right. Hey, oh, some, um, something, something people may be um, interested in also, something I do with all of my fiction books is I have a contest, a Name That Pet contest. Oh, okay. And so for each book, um, I will have hero pets, uh, you know, one or two cats, one or two dogs, and then the readers get to nominate the name of their pets, and then they all vote on them. So in Hit and Run, there are three other named hero cats okay. in the book and three other yes. hero dogs. And so that's something that is, you know, if I'm, I'm talking to the fiction writers out there or even the nonfiction writers, think about it's a great promotional opportunity because the people that win, they get a copy of the book, they get their name and their pet's name in the book, and then they share it with all that of That sounds good. Okay. All right. Let's give a big round of applause for our very special talented guest, Amy Sojai. Um, at this point, we're going to have Kathy jump in and talk about the breed, the Siamese. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about CCW, and then we're going to toast ginger cat uh, margarita is my drink of kitty cocktail for tonight. So we got about 13 minutes. We can do it. Take it away, Kathy. Okay, let me get my slideshow up here going. We're going to talk about the Siamese today. So the Siamese is probably the most recognizable breed of cat because they've been around for a very, very long time. The cats originally came from the country called Siam, which is now called Thailand, in the 1800s. And they're very sleek lines, they're contrasting color, they're chiseled looks to their heads, those beautiful deep blue almond eyes, and their short coats can make them living art. They're very inquisitive, they're very intelligent, have a very loving nature. They love to cuddle with you or with other cats. And CFA recognizes these cats in four colors, seal point, blue point, chocolate point, and lilac point. But before I get into that, I've got to talk about a topic that I bring up quite often at my cat shows because you talk to 95% of the people out there that have had the cat and they will all tell you they have owned a Siamese. And they come up with different names for them. They call them Applehead Siamese or Old Style Siamese, different things like that. There's a difference in the Siamese pointed gene and the Siamese breed, okay? The Siamese gene is very prolific. We see it in all kinds of other cats. Looky here, we have a Berman, Seal Point, Ragdoll, Seal Point, Devon Rex, Seal Point, Cornish Rex, Seal Point, and a Himalayan, Seal Point. These are not Siamese, okay? But they all have the Siamese gene. So when we talk about a Siamese, we talk about the whole cat. And these are cats 
that have been bred from registered pedigreed Siamese cats going way back to the 50s and beyond, okay? Now true, back in the 1950s, these cats had a rounder head, but like we do with all of our breeds, man has influence on what the look we want. And they slowly started moving more toward the longer heads, the longer legs, the longer bodies. And since like the 50s and 60s, they've all pretty much looked like this. Uh, the show cats have been. So let's talk about what we've got here. This picture here just sends me over the top because this is an absolutely beautiful picture. Not only does it show this beautiful long legs and that long body and that long tail, but look at this long, beautifully straight profile to this head, beautiful finish to the chin, those large ears, they form a perfect triangle. So if you draw a line from the nose all the way up to the tip of the ears, then you get this beautiful triangle shape to the head. So this is the seal point. This is the darkest of all the colors. The point will be a dark seal brown. Then we have the blue point. The blue point has this beautiful gray, deep blue to gray coloration. And of course, those lovely eyes. Then we have the chocolate point. The chocolate's going to have a milk chocolate on the points. And when you get into the chocolate and the lilacs, it is more difficult to get the full masking on the face. And you, uh, I'm going to talk about how this is a temperature sensitive gene in a minute. But especially in the lighter colors, you will not find as much coloration on the front legs. And I'm going to talk about why that is in just a minute. And then the last color we have is this frosty gray lilac, which the lilac is the dilute of the chocolate and the blue is the dilute of the seal point. So beautiful kittens and beautiful Siamese that we have here. Let's talk about the pointed pattern. The pointed pattern is a, a form of albinoism or albinism, and that's a re, uh, mutation that causes the enzyme, which turns on the color, to be temperature sensitive. So the color likes the cool parts of the cat's body. So that's the front legs, the face, the ears, the legs, and the tail. The body coloration can develop some color if the cat gets colder. And you know how we all get colder as we get older? You know, everybody that's old is always freezing cold. Well, I think our cats get colder as they get older too. Maybe it's due to their body temperature not regulating quite as well, or they put on a little more layers of fat and padding. And so you can get the shading in the body uh, as the cats uh, age. And it's, I'll tell you a funny story. I had a beautiful seal point Siamese. She loved to lay on my cold tile floor. She developed a stripe all the way down her belly from laying on the floor. Uh, when the kittens are born, they're usually pretty much solid white. They develop their color around four weeks. And um, cats that live in a cooler climate will typically have a lighter coat. Now, All right. we, have, we have lots of other variations of the Siamese. It's been used to uh, create a lot of different breeds. We have the Javanese and the Balinese, the color point short hairs, the Oriental short hairs. These are all varieties of Siamese in some associations. They're all called Siamese. CFA breaks these out uh, based on their coat length and their color pattern. And this is uh, kind of showing what I was talking about back in the 50s when they had a little more rounder heads. And uh, we also have the Oriental short hairs that were created from the Siamese with uh, over hundreds of colors and patterns uh, with this breed. And then they, the Tonkinese was also created using the Siamese breed where they were met, uh, bred to a Burmese and these cats were known for their aqua eyes. So here's a couple of different kittens pictures. You can see they don't have a lot of color when they're young just pretty much it'll come in on the nose first 
and then it later develops into the ears and the legs and the tail. So you have to wait until these kittens are four to five weeks old before you figure out which color they are, but they're so cute. They so are. That is okay. my lesson on the Siamese. I learned a lot. Thank you, Kathy. Hey, let's quickly talk about CCW and then we're gonna make our cocktail. So here we okay. go. All right, CCW is CFA's program to recognize the non-pedigree cats. It stands for Companion Cat World. And when you send in your one-time fee of $13 to register your cat, if you upload a picture at that time, we will send you a card. And this is a card, plastic card with your cat's picture on it. These also come in luggage tags, also rings that go on your keychain. So it's really cool to have a luggage tag so you can put it on your crate. So when you do take your cat to the vet, they know which crate and which cat is in there. You go to cfa.org slash ccw, one-time registration fee, do it today. Thank you, Kathy. Hey, uh, Amy, come on back because we're, we're gonna finish up uh, for, with your guest spot. I'm going to make the ginger cat margarita. It is there to honor all cats like my co-host, Casey and Rusty and other ginger cats. I'm so nervous because they're on either side of my bar that's got all the stuff that's gonna spill in my lap. But the ginger cat margarita is kind of a fun variation. If you could show that cocktail um, graphic that um, the amazing Teresa Kiger created and in honor of Mr. Rusty, look at the little orange I love the little uh, tie, tie, tie. bow tie. Thank you, Teresa. That's really, really sweet. So any of you blessed to have a red tabby or orange tabby, I'm messing all this up, uh, you CFA judges, but there's something about those cats. They got quite a lot of personalities. So to make the um, ginger cat margarita, very easy, guys. Start with one of your uh, cocktail shakers, put some ice in it, and... I use a posi pour. So if you count, uh, you need one and a half ounces of silver tequila. All margaritas have tequila. I like silver, it's smoother. But you count to six for one and a half ounce. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Hesitate for Kathy, she likes generous pours. Then you add half an ounce of Cointreau. Don't be cheap. Don't be doing triple sec. Go, go, go big. This is an orange flavored liqueur that comes from France. So for half ounce, that would be um, a two count. One, two, really slow. See that, Kathy? Um, then to give it a little bit of a flavor, because it is a ginger cat margarita, I have uh, my OJ. And you put about uh, an ounce of orange juice in your drink. Then you take a fresh squeezed lime. I'm cheating. Here's my lime I didn't cut up. And you go ahead and put um, an ounce of lime. I'm very good at measuring. You put the lid on it. You pray you don't spill it all over yourself. And you shake that kitty up. Then you have a rock glass ready that has ice in it and you strain it into there. Here comes our beautiful concoction, starting to look like a ginger cat. You then, um, oh, I forgot the triple, I forgot the uh, simple syrup. There it goes. <laughs> hey, if you guys ever spend, yeah, but I have a stirrer. See, the good thing about a bartender, you don't panic. I just stirred in my simple syrup. I meant to do that. Um, and then you top it with garnish it with a nice orange tip on simple syrup guys you don't have to buy it go take your little saucepan put some sugar and water boil it till it dissolves put it in a sealed container and keep it in the fridge it's good for about a month or two how's that did i just save you guys two dollars from buying simple syrup yes. if you do open and use simple syrup it's got to be refrigerated well, all right? right so at this time let's please all Raise a glass. We've got Pinot. What do you have, Amy? No, she's Pinot. On mute. Oh, you're on mute, Amy. Go ahead. P Pinot. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never had Amy muted before. 
Pino Grigio. Pino Grigio. Pino. And a kitty cat mug. <laughs> all right. And uh, for all of us, please, whether it's a glass of water, a glass of wine, or a ginger cat margarita, let's all raise a glass. Let's all toast to all cats, purebreds, and the mutt ones like I have. They make our lives so much better. Cheers, kitties. Cheers. 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 Oh, this I one's this one's getting to be one of my favorites. Oh yeah, baby. I can feel the Cointreau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the silver tequila won't tequila you later, if you know what I mean. So hey guys, okay, next quick, week. Very quick, our, our guest is professional cat sitter Jessica Bartlett. And she is amazing. You're gonna learn a lot from her. And uh, so we want to at this time thank Kathy Black, Teresa Kiger, big round of applause for Amy Sojai. Casey, Rusty, myself, we all thank you. Be good to your pets. So until next time, same cat channel, same cat time. We'll see you on Meowie Hour. <laughs>